Mark. You saw what CC Sabathia did. It cost him five hundred thousand dollars. Your thoughts? I feel bad for CC because he's doing what he was supposed to do. I mean, I, I don't like what the Rays did. Yeah, they had a couple guys hit the last few days, but the Yankees were not trying to hit, you know, Kiermaier or, or any other guys. And then you throw at Romine's head. You know, we, we've been on this, I've been on this show multiple times, Michael. I don't like it when pitchers throw at heads, and it, there's just no reason for it. CeCe did exactly what he was supposed to do, kind of threw it at the, the, the hip area. And um, he knew he was getting thrown out, but he had to do it. Now, are you surprised that he would sacrifice 500 grand because he had 55 pitches? He could have pitched two more innings and did it then in the eighth inning, but he wanted to do it right away because the catcher was up and Romine's the catcher. Are you surprised he sacrificed half a million dollars? Yeah, my guess is he so he crazy. didn't know what was going on. I, th that's what I would think. Um, that being said, CeCe's made a lot of money in his career. He might have said, you know, Forget it. I'll sacrifice the half a million bucks and uh, and make a point. And and he made a point. There's no doubt. And I think this will be a, a very cool story. It might actually galvanize the Yankees, bring them a little closer together to talk about the selflessness of of one of their veteran pitchers. Uh, I give CC a lot of credit. Whether he knew or didn't know, he did the right thing there. And. Um, you know, in the end, he probably he's probably not going to miss the half a million bucks. He's done well for himself in his career. Now, what, I'm sorry, Michael. Uh, did you know he? I mean, just being in the room with him, being his teammate, is he that sort of guy? I always hear such great things about he's the best teammate possible. Of course, he's he's one of those guys that's going to stand up for his teammates on the mound. I played with plenty of pitchers that no matter what was happening in the game, they were not going to throw at a at a hitter. And again, I don't like the the entire that whole part of the game. That being said, if I'm getting beamed or my teammates are getting beamed and we feel like it's unfair, the pitcher that doesn't stand up for us, you know, we don't love it. Um, now, I don't think it's a huge deal. I don't think you see a lot of fights on teams because of that. But it just does, it kind of puts a, a feather in CC's cap to say that, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my teammates above everybody else here and, uh, and sacrifice, get kicked out of this game. Now, I'm not sure the Yankees will give him the $500,000 anyway. That would be awful generous. But do you see maybe Aaron Boone giving him two innings in the Red Sox series so he can hit that threshold? That's very interesting. I, actually, I love that. Um, because, you know what, it's going to keep him fresh, and it'll also keep him, um, you may want to call it a, uh, you know, a test run for the playoffs. I'm not sure how, how CC is going to be used. You know, for me, he's probably the fourth starter in the playoffs. That being said, in that, that wild card game against the A's, you might need him for an inning. I mean, who knows? So I, I actually really like that. And uh, it, you kind of killed two birds with one stone there by giving him two innings in that series against the Sox. Mark, do you believe, I mean, we had on Aaron Boone yesterday, that they still haven't made a decision who's starting one, say? Uh, yes, I do believe they have not made a decision. Because Isn't that alarming? Yeah. <sighs> You have, you almost have a no win, no lose situation, depending on how you look at it. If I look at it that this is a bullpen game anyway, then if my pitcher goes out there and, and like Severino did last year and gets in trouble at all, he's out. So in essence, it's a bullpen game. If the guy goes out there and does well for an inning or two innings or three innings, it's, again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's Severino, Tanaka, or Hap. Whoever goes out there and struggles early is out of the game. So, to that point, I, I can see where they have not made their decision. And Boone told us that it's not it's not it's a three way tie. Like he doesn't have a one, two, or three, which I also find difficult to believe. Even if he hadn't made the decision, don't you think deep down in his mind he's got an order? Yes, Hap's the best pitcher on the team right now. Uh, Tanaka was not good last night. Um, hopefully, it was just. I felt that Masahiro Tanaka was a little bit distracted last night. And, you know, maybe he's looking towards the next start. Maybe he was told, hey, if you pitch well here, you do get that game, whatever it might be. He just seemed like he was not locked in. Uh, that being said, I would actually, I think Jay Happ's the best starting pitcher on the Yankees, but I would actually start with my, my bullpen in this game, and this is why. If I believe that I'm going to have to rely on my bullpen anyway, 
why wouldn't I try to get through that Oakland A's lineup a few times, you know, with, with maybe Green, Holder, whoever it might be, early on, and then say, okay, we have a two or three or four run lead, whatever it might be. I might want to save Hap for that game one. Or I might want to say, if the Yankees win 7 nothing and burn Hap, and he can't pitch until game three of the division series, they might be kicking themselves saying, ah, oh, man, you know, we, we beat this team by seven runs, but, but Hap can't pitch in game one, and I, I, sh- I should have I held him back. So I wouldn't mind them, them starting their relievers to, to begin that game uh, against the A's. What's wrong with Mark Teixeira's weekly spot on the Michael K show? Now, Mark, um, I agree with you that Hap has pitched the best since he's come over here. But David Cohn said on the air the last couple of games, he said it's going to be very hard for the Yankees to keep the Ferrari in the, in the garage for the wild card game. He's saying that Severino has the best stuff. He's the Ferrari. Do you see what he's saying? I agree with Coney. I mean, Severino has the highest ceiling of any pitcher on the Yankees. But we've seen what happened the second half of the season. Um, if, you know, if my Ferrari all of a sudden starts smoking or, or, or gets a flat tire, i got to bring it into the shop. And we, we know what happened last year against the Twins. It might have been a complete fluke. But could you imagine Yankee fans getting on Aaron Boone and the Yankees organization if they put Luis Severino out in the first inning and he gives up a three-run homer in the first inning to the A's and they lose that game? They, Boone would be crushed. And it'd be, you knew he was struggling the second half and boom, 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 and all these different reasons. I think there's way more downside for the Yankees organization if they start Severino in that game. I, I got to tell you what, I think because of the uncertainty and the fact that they don't have a favorite, there's just three games left in the season, I think this thing is rife for second guessing. So whoever you pick better pitch well because if not, there are two other people that every fan is going to say they should have started A, they should have started B. This is a tough call for the Yankees that they don't have that one guy that just jumps out and say, okay, must win, I've got to start him. Bingo. And again, so, so I think you just proved my point, Michael. If that's the case, I bring out you know, the best part of my pitching staff right now is my bullpen. And so if you don't have a clear number one, you run out your bullpen out there early on, and if you, have a, and you figure it out as you go. You basically go into that game on – it's Wednesday, correct? Wednesday in, uh, in Yankee Stadium. Yes. Yep. Hopefully. On Wednesday, you tell every single one of your pitchers, you're available tonight. And you start, you know, whether it's Green or whether it's Robertson or whoever you, you want early in that game. Heck, could be Zach Britton. I don't know. It could be Roldis Chapman. Who knows? But you set up your bullpen to get through the first few innings of that game. Hopefully the Yankees give you a lead. Hopefully, um, you know, Oakland, because you're throwing so many different pitchers at them, they can't get into a rhythm. Um, you get a lead, and then you figure it out as you go. If you get a five- or six-run lead in that game, Heck, maybe Sabathia goes and, and pitches a few innings. You know, maybe you save, save some of those guys. Maybe you get Severino in that game for the middle innings because um, you know you, want him, you wanted him to be the second or third game starter of the division series. But it just creates a lot of flexibility if you go in there with your bullpen first. Well, he's sticking to his guns with Gary Sanchez. He gave us all the reasons why. Frames, pitches, gun for an arm, calls a good game. And, of course, we know his potential offensively. But, Mark, do you believe 2-1 Yankees, top of the ninth inning, Sanchez makes the last out in the previous inning that he's going to catch that ninth? I do. I do. And, and the reason is, is in this instance, you have to stick to your guns. And if your guns tell you that, that Gary Sanchez is my catcher for this game and, and really for the rest of the playoffs, because so that's kind of what you're saying, right? I mean, you're saying that in the big games of, of this playoff run, that Gary Sanchez will be my guy, you cannot take him out of that game and just basically say, well, he's only my guy until he's not. That would just, I think that would just discredit your entire thesis of, of putting Gary in that position. You've seen it all in so many years in the big leagues. Uh, I mean, what, what is the deal with Luke Voigt? How do you explain this? He's 27. <laughs> he's 27 years old. He, he, you know what? He's, he's a lot of fun to watch. Sometimes guys just need the at bats and the confidence. I think he he made a point early in the season, with, you know, when he came over from the Cardinals, and basically just saying, "I finally have gotten the chance at the big leagues." 
And that might all that that might be the the easiest answer to this question. What who is Luke Voigt and what happened to Luke Voigt is he got a chance to play. And confidence in baseball is so important. You can take a great player with zero confidence and he's gonna stink. And you can take an average player, a journeyman, that, you know, believes in himself, believes he belongs in the in the big leagues, and you're a big strong dude, you square up some balls, good things are gonna happen, and that's what we've seen. All right, Jacob DeGrom, I don't know how you felt about Cy Young going into last night, but do you think he nailed it down with that performance against the Braves? He did. And we had this con we've had this conversation all year long, right? And, and uh, middle of the season, I said no. Really, three-quarters of the season, I said no. Now, yes. And the reason is there's two things. One, it may not be a big deal to a lot of people, but having a winning record matters to me. Just just to say that I am a winning pitcher, I had a winning record this year, I think is important. So last night helped that argument. But number two, the, the ERA continued to go down while Scherzer and Nola's continued to go up. And Scherzer and Nola's team, halfway through the season and three quarters of the season, were still in the, the pennant race. And that, now they're not. You know, those teams aren't, aren't going to the playoffs. Um, so if you have three teams that aren't going to the playoffs, so you have three pitchers, and one stats are so far and above the other twos, you know, that's why DeGrom is your Cy Young. I uh, got some text messages before we let you go. Matt in Kearney, New Jersey said, will we see CC in pinstripes next year? To pull, and that really... I think so. Um, I think so because it's not like the Yankees have four or five young arms that are just knocking on the door. They have to be starters next year. Um, he's a great insurance policy. You know, probably going to come relatively cheap. You know, that's again the, the word is relative. But if you only have to pay him between five and ten million bucks, and and he can come and be a a you know solid four or five starter, swingman type guy. Uh, if he wants to pitch, why not bring him back and, and have that? He's almost like your Neil Walker insurance policy, that if some things go wrong, I'm going to need that veteran presence, that veteran guy in my rotation to make sure that I can get some quality starts. Well, how about this, though? You don't bring him back, that's $10 million. You don't bring back Gardner, that's $12 million. And you don't bring back um, Robertson, that's $14 million. That's Corbin. Yeah, oh. Under that scenario, then, then yeah. I mean, if, if you have to make the, the numbers work, Brian, right. you, you better believe Brian Cashman already has this thing mapped out. Right. I mean, I mean the, the Yankees, they don't just kind of willy-nilly make decisions based on, uh, oh, I kind of want that guy on my team. I'll give him whatever it takes. You know, they're going to map out their entire offseason. They're going to know that CeCe's not going to be, you know, he's not going to have to sign on day one of free agency. He'll, he'll wait around for the right deal. And if they have excess cap space at the end of the season, you know, that's when you bring in CeCe. But if you've already spent that money on Corbin, they're not going to go over the, the, the luxury cap just to get to, you know, just to get to a, a, a fourth or fifth or sixth starter Right. In, your, in your rotation and pay that penalty. This is uh, from Ash from Howell, New Jersey. How do you change allegiance from the team you grew up following to the team you play on? I, I think I can answer money, but what's your answer? <laughs> it, you know, for me, it was really simple. I, you know, I grew up an Oriole fan. Um, I, the first game that I ever played in Camden Yards, I felt no attachment to the Orioles. I'm playing for the Texas Rangers. I'm, I went through, you know, a, a whole year in the minor leagues with the team the year before and, and spring training. And, you know, I'm not sure, you know, what month of the year it was in my rookie season. But I showed up with the Rangers uniform. There was zero affiliation, zero connection I had with the Baltimore Orioles um, because I was worried about per performing on the field. And it's just kind of the way it was. Uh, two pro I'm sorry, you got another one? Mike? No, no. I was just two prong question. Who is gonna? Who's the best team in the National League? And do you give that team a chance to win it all? Jeez, this is that's a, a very tough question because nobody in the National League is wants to be the best team, right? So last week I would have told you the Cubs. They might not even win the division. Everyone else is saying, oh, it's the Dodgers. They may not even win the division. You know, by default, the best team in the National League might be the Braves because the Braves are the team that, you know, they know where they're going to be, uh, you know, next week on, on Tuesday and right. Wednesday. But I just think that the five or, you know, the five best teams in baseball are all in the American League. Yeah. Those, those five teams that are going to make the playoffs in the American League, any one of them can win the World Series. 
I would be surprised if the Brewers won the World Series. I would be surprised if the Rockies won the World Series. I'd really even be surprised if the Braves won the World Series. Um, that, that's, a, that's a long non-answer. But I'll just well, say Cubs. I, I'll just say <laughs> Cubs are the best team because they won it two years ago and their roster still looks good. You said they don't, you don't think they would, but does hot matter because the Rockies are up 3-1 against the Phillies right now? That would be their seventh straight win. If they carry a 10-game winning streak into the playoffs, end up winning the West because of it, is that enough to get a team on a run? It, it can, but remember what happened to the Rockies back in 2007. They were the hottest team in baseball. I remember playing them with the Braves in 2007 uh, in August when I got traded over from, uh, from Texas, and I'm like, this team stinks. And they went on an amazing like run. 22-2, and two, half- two, I think. Yeah, they went on this incredible run second half of the season, you know, rolled through the first two rounds of the playoffs and got swept by the Red Sox. So I I hear you, and I do agree that a hot team is important, but at the end of the day, a, a kind of hot Red Sox or kind of hot or a decent Astros team is still better than a hot Rockies team uh, because of the starting pitching that, that the – Astros have and the depth that the Red Sox have. Good stuff, Mark. We'll talk to you next week, buddy. Always fun, guys.